in one second, our lives were changed forever. And it literally, the he hit us so hard that he dropped the engine out of his truck and then went over top of our van. And our van flew like, I don't even know how many feet into yeah. the woods. And the metal was just morphed around my husband and my body in the front. Um, it's almost as if angels wrapped around yes. us because you could see, you know, the, 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 rescue workers that came said we could literally just see your body morphed into that metal yes. and Jen suffered a traumatic brain injury and she was the most injured um, no one thought she was going to live through the night and we actually all four of our family members we were medevaced and flown to four different hospitals within hours of each other because we live in a little town so they could not handle that many trauma victims but um, Jen was a Glasgow scale of three and dead people are three and so no one thought she'd live and um, then she was in a coma for five weeks and um, we just cried out I remember waking up in the van and my face is just smashed and I couldn't figure out how I got there because I had just been watching Jen sing in the yes. choir and I remember just it's saying out loud is this real or is this a dream Jen Barrick, we have longed for this interview for quite some time, haven't we? Yes, we're so excited to be yes. here. You, Linda, just put out a 10-year revised edition to your book titled Miracle for Jen because you guys experienced a complete unraveling of life years ago. And I would love for you to start out by telling us how that began. Well, Jen was 15 and she was singing in um, a choir concert with her high school choir at church at Thomas Road Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. And um, it was a great night. My father is Dr. Ed Heinsen and he's a preacher and he spoke on revelation in an hour, if you can believe that. And um, at the end, hundreds of people came forward uh, to give their lives to Christ and yes. it was a great night. And so I love a part and I invited a lot of friends over yes. Jen's boyfriend and his family yes. and we had probably 20 to 30 people headed to our house after church and um, on the way home less than a mile from our house we were hit by a drunk driver yes. who was going 80 miles an hour with his lights off and he had been drinking all day it was 8 30 on a Sunday night in November um, but he, he had a breakup with a girlfriend and he was he was on drugs and he was drinking and he was filling his life with all the things that don't matter you know he was self-medicating and um, he actually had hit another vehicle before us it was a hit and run and so the people in that car had called 911 and were begging the police to come and that um, and they were actually praying out loud for us that he would not kill the next person that he hit and our whole family was together. We had a Sienna van. Um, and for the first time, probably in weeks, our whole family was in the car because my son, Josh, played sports. So my husband was always off coaching his sports and Jen cheered and I was always with her. But we were all together in the family van. And in one second, our lives were changed forever. And it literally, the he hit us so hard that he dropped the engine out of his truck and then went over top of our van and our van flew like I don't even know how many feet into yeah. the woods and the metal was just morphed around my husband and my body in the front um, it's almost as if angels wrapped around yes. us because you could see you know the 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 rescue workers that came said we could literally just see your body morphed into that metal and Jen suffered a traumatic brain injury and she was the most injured um, no one thought she was going to live through the night and we actually all four of our family members we were medevaced and flown to four different hospitals within hours of each other because we live in a little town so they could not handle that many trauma victims but um, Jen was a Glasgow scale of three and dead people are three and so no one thought she'd live and um, then she was in a coma for five weeks and um, we just cried out I remember waking up in the van and my face is just smashed 
And I couldn't figure out how I got there because I had just been watching Jen sing in the yes. choir. And I remember just sit, saying out loud, is this real or is this a dream? And my son, Josh was only 11 sitting behind me and he said, mom, it's real. And we just started crying out to God. And in your darkest hours, I want to encourage anyone listening. God is not far away. He is so close. And when I think that my son was 11 and he should have been screaming, he, he said, mom, I can't explain it. I was yelling mom and I was yelling dad and no one was awake. No one was answering. He thought he lost his whole family. And yet he said, God gave me this peace that was unexplainable. And again, God comes so close to us in those dark moments. He is not far away. He is right there with us and he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Well, I think pictures are worth a thousand words. And so I brought some pictures that you have of the accident. Um, and I want to encourage you guys who are watching or listening to look at Miracle for Jen, which is the book that you have revised. And you show a picture of the car, which is about the size of like my Dixie cup right here <laughs> from yeah. a minivan. Yeah. Um, and I want to also include you guys, you were involved in Bible studies and teaching Bible right. studies. Jen, you were involved right. in cheerleading. I mean, y'all were living a life that honored the Lord, yeah. that that was determined to walk with him. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman who got pulled or who hit you had been pulled over. The cop did not take his keys. Right. So all of these I things in that, reflection, right. mm -hmm. you write about saying, I can go back and revisit those moments and think, why didn't he take the guy's keys? Why did the, you got Kentucky Fried Chicken. Why did it take so long for the guy to cook the chicken for all the people coming? I mean, there were moments in time that you reflect on and you think God could have intervened there and here, but he chose to allow all of this to happen. And it has forever changed the trajectory of your life. How do you deal with those why God or how come God you could have you're sovereign and you didn't I'm sure I mean you all spent months in hospitals with broken bodies right we all have a choice um just last night we spent three hours with a friend who um, was just diagnosed with cancer and we shared with the family you have a choice to run away from God or to run to to God and where else can we go? There is no other hope except Jesus. He is, he is the hope of the world. He is our rock. He is our foundation. Our and it doesn't mean you don't have hard days. It doesn't mean you don't wrestle. There were so many days I wrestled with God in my mind and in my heart saying, God have been good to my family. And, um, this, the one thing that helped me was to focus on that this life is just a dot. It's just a dot on the timeline compared to all of eternity in heaven one day. And um, that, you know, for Jen with her brain injury, um, well, Jen, when we ask you, like, what has this cost you? You know, we, we just had 10 years in ministry um, and to see all the thousands and thousands of people that have come to Christ because Jen is still broken and because her memory is still comes and goes, but yet she praises God. And, um, you know, we would say to Jen, like, what has this cost you? And what did you say? Well, I said, it hasn't cost me anything. Well, that was my desire. I was begging God for boldness. I wanted to be able to pray out loud like my younger brother and just to be able to witness more freely and openly. And mm -hmm. um, yes, through the he answered that prayer for <laughs> sure. Did. So part of my struggle that you read in the book, mm -hmm. she has all these beautiful journals. She's a different yes. personality and she's <laughs> begging God for boldness. Mm -hmm. And as a mom, I want to go and erase all those <laughs> journals because the cost was huge yeah. and yet God answered everyone and I don't understand it, but yeah. somehow Jen was so surrendered to God and he prepared her ahead of time for what was going to happen. But, you know, my biggest struggle yeah. was with the policeman and I, I don't know why you just think of a policeman as to protect you. And yet they're human just like we yes. are and they make mistakes. And, um, I wrote another book called Beauty Marks, and um, 
it's it takes you on a journey of healing through the words Hope of and Jesus. Healing. And it was literally um, 10 years later after the wreck, I was working on this book and we got an email from the policeman that said the worst five minutes of my life. Mm-hmm. And he had not been allowed to reach out to us yes. for 10 years, I don't think. But, you know, to read his words, yes. recounting the whole day and how he had been tormenting himself for years. Um, and he just made a mistake. He thought the drunk driver was turning on his car because he was cold, you know, turn it on the truck because he was cold. He had yes. no idea he was going to come after us, you know, that he was going to hit a family. Mm -hmm. And um, he actually said in that email, if you could find in your heart Mm -hmm. to say the words of Jesus on the cross, Father, forgive him, for he didn't know what he was doing. And that just wrecked me because I was working on the book at that moment on that chapter where Jesus said, Father, forgive them as they, and they keep killing him. You know, they don't stop. And God has taught us so much about forgiveness Mm -hmm. that forgiveness is not based on if the other person changes or not. Forgiveness is more between me and God. (laughs) It's getting that bitterness out. And um, because I can't control what the other person does or doesn't do, but but that bitterness is a toxin and it'll hurt me. Yes. And Jen, yeah, what do you call forgiveness? I like to call forgiveness, free giveness. Because when we choose to forgive, we experience that freedom mm-hmm. that comes from God. Mm-hmm. Tell about the hook. And we take that person or that situation off our hook and we release it and put it on God's hook. Yeah. So we are yeah. free. Yeah, she says, take that person off your hook, put them on God's hook. (laughs) It's a whole lot bigger and it's a whole lot more capable. And we're not talking about a little brain injury. We're talking about Jen's head being completely split open. Your son looked back. He could see part of her brain. There were months and months and months in the hospital. Um, Jen, do you have any recollection of that? Because your mom talks about having no language, having nothing that you could, and you were in a coma, but you could speak scripture and still sing. Yes, yes. Well, um, during this time, it, it's truly just a story of God's grace and how he met mm-hmm. me and carried me. Um, he really spared me from remembering the 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 hardness mm-hmm. every day of it all the I I used to scream um, in the showers because it felt like needles hitting my body mm-hmm. but then five minutes later I would be singing glory to God in the highest <laughs> yeah. no- and isn't that like so much of us yeah. five minutes we're yes. just screaming and the yes. next minute we're like yes. but thank you Jesus yes. So actually we saw two sides to Jen in the Mm -hmm. hospital and it has taken me so many years to put this into words, but Jen's mind and body was so broken. She couldn't sit up. She Mm -hmm. didn't know her name. She didn't know she had a brother. Um, she, She couldn't follow a verbal command. They'd say, Jen, raise your right arm. And she could not do it, but she (laughs) knew Jesus and he was enough. He was enough and we could not even communicate with her. Um, So we would try to talk to her and and she would moan and she's in this bed that is zipped up like a tent. You couldn't understand me. It was just moans. It was just moans and groans and we couldn't understand her when she would talk. And so she's Mm -hmm. thrashing back and Mm -hmm. forth. So she was in this coma for five weeks. And as she started to emerge, it's not like you just wake (laughs) up. And you're no. awake one day. It's like you get little glimmers of half an eye or you, you know, they, you know, so she's thrashing around and they have her bed zipped up like a tent. And um, it was just, it was horrific to watch. But while she's moaning and thrashing and um, we're trying to communicate with her all of a sudden, <laughs> yes. one day she starts talking to Jesus <laughs> And it's mm-hmm. this uninjured voice. It sounds mm-hmm. like Jen and we're just allowed to hear it. It's like she's with him. Somehow she is in God's presence mm-hmm. in this bed, thrashing around like a baby with the, with the feeding tube. I can still 
picture it. She's getting all wound up in this feeding tube and she can't communicate with us, but she's communicating with God and he's allowing us to hear it. It's the only time we could understand her was when she was talking to God. And it was this two way conversation. She's saying, Lord, should I go or should I stay? What would you have me do? And then she's thrashing around and she's saying, okay, God, I'll do it but there aren't words to describe you. You'll have to write it down. I'm, it was unbelievable. And um, it's like God was giving her a plan for her life and she was agreeing to it. And we saw where the Holy Spirit is never disabled. Yes. And it it was unreal to calm her in all her pain and all her screaming, we'd bring in the wow worship <laughs> CD. And even when she didn't have much of a voice, she could mouth all 22 songs on that wow worship <laughs> CD. And we left a Bible open at all times because I said, God's word is alive and powerful. Don't close that Bible. And my whole left side was crushed. My husband and I are in wheelchairs. We had to go home every night. Yes. So a different friend stayed with her every night in the hospital. And I would have this list of things like you've got to read God's word out yes. loud over her. And I'll never forget my cousin Heidi mm -hmm. calling me at four in, in the morning and I'm at home in a hospital bed. And and Heidi's like, you know, I would literally, my son would tape my pills to my hospital bed because to just get up to go to the bathroom was horrific to try to get in a wheelchair or I would hop on one leg, which I now have problems with that knee because I would hop on my good leg to the bathroom. And, um, but Heidi called me in the middle of the night and said, you're not going to believe it. But I was reading Psalms over Jen to calm her down. And she quoted the whole chapter. Oh and, but I tried to trick her and I went to the Old Testament and the New Testament and it didn't matter. Yes. Every verse Jen had hid in her heart was just flowing out of her. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've been learning so much about the Holy yes. Spirit through Jen. The Holy Spirit reminds us of truth. truth. The Holy Spirit yes. can warn us of danger. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is joy, is peace, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. It all lives in us. And um, it's just been an amazing journey to watch how in Jen's brokenness, yes. the more broken she was, mm -hmm. the more the Holy Spirit would mm -hmm. speak through her yeah. and help her um, yes. in ways that were unexplainable. The things that she would say, she had so much spiritual knowledge and yet she didn't know the difference between an elephant and a bird. It was unbelievable to watch. And then um, one story that changed my life forever. We were, um, she was still at UVA in the, in the children's hospital at, at Kluge and um, it was Christmas time and she couldn't even stand up a lift, put her in the wheelchair. And my friend Pam Foster was with us and Pam is literally sitting on the ground, rubbing Jen's feet to calm her down because she had so much pain and I'm in a wheelchair and I it's Christmas. So I'm like, let's sing silent night. That'll help Jen. Cause yeah. she's thrashing so much. If you can picture her head and her neck getting is getting all caught. all caught up on that headrest yeah. of the wheel chair and it's um, almost like a seizure like, like did you wonder if she's like having crashing seizure? and yeah. yes just yeah. uncontrollable motion yeah movement yes her your brain controls your movements yes. and her brain was was a global injury mm -hmm. it was a frontal injury it was a is a brain stem injury it was bleeding in the brain it was just horrific i mean she, the doctor said she Jerry. should never wake up. I mean, they, they said she'll never talk. She'll never walk. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, God delights in doing yes. miracles. And yes. this one day, um, we start singing silent night and Jen stops kicking and thrashing and she just starts glowing <laughs> and she's looking up at the left. And at the end, she just says, amen. And I looked at her and again, I'm in my wheelchair and I'm like, Jen, do you see Jesus? Wow. And she says, yes. Don't you see him? He is standing right beside me. And that moment in time changed my life forever because Jen could not look at me and know that I was her mom. She was completely mm, blind from her brain injury. She had to hear my yes. voice. And mm -hmm. um, in the darkest moment of yes. her life, God made himself so yes. real to her. And she could see him and mm -hmm. she could talk to him mm -hmm. and tell, tell how you like to view Jesus. 
I love to view Jesus as my escort because I love how the Bible promises that once we have invited the Lord into our hearts and into our lives mm -hmm. to be our personal Savior, how God promises to never leave us or forsake us. He's our lifelong companion. Mm -hmm. He'll be there to hold your hand, to guide mm -hmm. you, to yeah. carry you on the hard days. Mm -hmm. You are yeah. never alone. Yeah. <clears throat> we love that. It's word. so interesting because we hear so much or read a lot in the Christian world about, mm -hmm. you know, those who go to heaven and come back or near-death experiences. And right. You're here to say, your the spirit in you which yes. god made and the spirit in each of us yes. which longs for god to fill yes. us right. because nothing on this earth will do that right and we can try in so many ways to fill that gap right but jen you were calling on him and he answered and your spirit was aligned with his yes yes how how is that unfolded in the in the weeks and months that followed in the rehab process, because there were so many setbacks. You both, I mean, right. as parents, right. Linda, you guys were you guys were fractured and busted right. up completely. Right. right. So it was terrible. I mean, it it was a terrible, dark, dark time. And the only thing that really gave us hope was Jen was praising God. I mean, she was screaming one minute, but again, the next minute she's praising God and she's pulling us out of the pit. And she doesn't even know she's in a hospital. She doesn't even know she's hurt, but for she's she's saying things out loud like, Lord, thank you for bringing me to this place to share my testimony. <laughs> thank you for all the people I've been able to impact. And she doesn't even know she's been in a car wreck. I mean, it's crazy. And she's looking at me and saying, will you hold up easily under this test? And I'm like, what do you mean? This is a test. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, what do you mean I'm in a test? But it was the Holy Spirit speaking mm -hmm. through her. And I remember being in these meetings. They'd have these family meetings with the um, with the doctors. And again, I'm in a wheelchair. Andy's in a wheelchair. And the nurses. So anyone that didn't know how to tap into the spiritual side of Jen got nothing. They The doctors would say she has a flat affect. Yeah. Um, we can't get her to do anything. We can't. They were going to send her home because yeah. she had to be able to do three hours three of hours. therapy a day. Yeah. And she wasn't awake yeah. for three hours. But all night long, she was talking <laughs> to Jesus yes. like a baby. She was up all night and slept all day. And I would be like, just come in and sing Jesus loves me with her. And you'll see that she's in there. You'll see the, I mean, her face would glow and she would light up when she talked about and Jesus. I, and she had a school teacher in the hospital Penny was her Penny, name. that loved Jesus. And so she knew how to tap into that spiritual mm -hmm. side of Jen. And so like when she was trying to get Jen to write her name, just help her do J E N Jen. Jen's crying. I can't, I can't. And then Penny says, well, why don't you write? I love Jesus. Yes. And don't you know, Jen tried <laughs> with all her might. Mm -hmm. And when we tried to get Jen to walk, you know, she's hanging on this. Um, I don't even know what it was. It held up all her weight mm -hmm. and it was on rollers just to get her to walk one step. And she's screaming, I can't, this hurts. And I knew that the night before when my mom was there, she quoted all 66 yes. books of the Bible. Yeah. So I just started saying Genesis, Exodus, and Jen's like Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. And she said all 66 <laughs> books of the Bible and took 66 steps down the hallway. When you tapped into the spiritual yes. side of Jen, it was unbelievable. And so when she came home, she was not ready to come home. No. I mean, insurance sent her home early. They said, I remember reading about that because you guys said, what are we going to do? What are, how are we yeah, going to take care So exactly. It, You're both still in wheelchairs. Right. We're in wheelchairs. My left hand did not work. So I could not even feed her. She's not eating. She's, she yeah. was eating and stopped eating. And I couldn't even do the feeding tube. You needed two hands to do that. And I'm um, I couldn't so. help her up and down the stairs. Her bedroom's at the top of the stairs. And yet we wanted to bring her home to a house that she was familiar with because yes. she didn't have a mem she didn't have a short term memory at all. So she wouldn't know where the forks were, but if she needed one, she'd walk to the right drawer, yes. you know, so we yes. knew it was important to, to have her in mm -hmm. a familiar environment. environment. But when she came home, um, the only way we could get her to do things was to tap into the, the spiritual spirit. side of her. Yes. And the only time 
that seem like our daughter was mm -hmm. when we tap into that <laughs> spiritual side. Yes. So we had no idea what we were doing, but we did the three P's. Yes. Now we realize we prayed out loud and the promises of God's word out loud just to survive the day. And then praise, um, song. praise songs. So the only way to connect with my daughter. To go anywhere. Or to yeah. go anywhere. Like she couldn't get in a car. She'd get so yeah. sick because of her vision was yeah. cortical blindness. And so we'd turn on the praise yeah. music really loud. Um, again, she'd say she would scream in the shower, yeah. but then she'd come down and turn on the praise music and be dancing yeah. around the family room. But it's the first thing I learned. How to it's do. the first thing she learned how to do is turn on that praise music. <laughs> but again, we, she would be crying. She had yeah. terrible anxiety. We couldn't go into a doctor's yeah. office. And the so Lord, what would we quote? We would quote, the Lord hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a love power and a sound mind. So we literally spent yes. all day, every day, yes. quoting scripture out loud. Mm -hmm. Um, singing praise songs, um, and, and praying, praying out loud, it's Lord Jesus, come it. to our yeah. rescue, Lord, help us. Um, and Jen just praised him. What we learned from Jen was she just, that's the fourth P <laughs> that's the fourth P was positive, like positivity. Jen refused to say anything negative out loud. And because she wasn't really operating in her flesh, it was only the spirit. Yes. I felt like God was teaching us something. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. important to speak positive yes. out loud. And she literally, uh, this started in the hospital. Well, well, She'd say thank you for healing me and raising me up yes. and i'd be screaming at her you cannot sit up like you're not healed you can't even sit up you know and you're she's telling like, her no 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 uh, that's not going to happen I'm she's like, like you're not the healed. holy spirit you mom right so she's literally praising god for healing her and it wasn't it hadn't happened yet but later mm -hmm. i when i went to write the book i realized God was trying to teach us something mm, through yes. Jen, that if we start praising yes. him in this advance before he answers, it yes. changes everything. everything. And it's so hard to do, but Jen just has this childlike faith. And can you tell what you said to me? Like, God is not of our dimension. What, you know, why would we tell him how to answer our prayers? Yes. Well, yes, I was sharing with my mom, you know, God isn't of our dimension. He is so much bigger and greater mm -hmm. than anything we can comprehend. And just, I was saying to my mom, why would we want to tell God to answer, you know, our prayers our way with our limited resources and limited mindset when he wants to do so much greater and wants to do answer our prayer requests with eternity in mind and for eternity. Yeah. 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 Jen said, why do I want to give yes. him my limited answer when yes. he has unlimited power? Yes. His power is unlimited. <laughs> and so even this past year, Jen has taught me instead of begging God for things and then being disappointed when God doesn't answer it my way, if I just, I can still beg him for those right. big things, something but I just greater. write, I write at the top of a page, Lord, do something greater. greater. And then I write all the things I can't control, all the things that are swirling in my head and my menopausal brain right now that I can't fix <laughs> and I can't control. And I'm like, I can't even sleep because they're swirling. So I, I just write, Lord, do something greater. And I list all those yes. things that I cannot control. And yep. every time, yeah, I'm releasing it. I'm trusting him. And then when I'm, you know, when those thoughts come in and I start worrying, I just say, God, I praise you. I praise you in advance for doing this or something greater. I praise you in advance for doing something something greater. And I don't want to limit you. Yes. And like Jen said, God always answers for his greatest glory. We have temporary in mind, but he has eternity in mind. And I want that quick fix. I mean, I do. I was begging God to fix Jen and make her who she was before. And I knew in my heart that Jen I just knew in my heart that Jen was going to win people to Christ. It was all in her journals, but in my mind, God was going to heal her that month or next month. Like it was not going to take years and years. And that's, what's hard. And I, you know, the other day I was thinking, what if God had answered my prayer the way I told him to? 
what if Jen was who she was before? She she didn't have boldness. Now she's uninhibited. <laughs> but it's because yeah. she praises God in her brokenness, because she praises God when she can't drive. And Jen yeah. always says, yeah. yet, when I can't drive yeah. yet. But, you know, yeah. I mean, she's not married yet. She doesn't have children yet, like all her friends. And yet, um, you know, she chooses to praise God and she has this overflowing contagious joy. And because of that, people look at Jen and they'll say, well, if Jen can praise God and trust him, maybe I can, maybe I can. And earlier she was saying in my ear, flip flop and yes. tell them what flip flop is. So what I mean by saying the word flip flop is that's what I like to do. Whatever your situation is to flip flop and to, um, speak the positive. Yes, speak the so, positive. Yeah. Speak the truth. So, so when Jen can't make- find something, or she yes. often does, she'll make gifts for her brother like two months ahead of time, and then she <laughs> can't find it in her room. And yes. and instead of saying Jen, you're so dumb. What do you say? Jen, you're so smart. <laughs> she just, just say the opposite. That's the best. Yeah. And then when you feel ugly, what do you say? Say nope. Flip flop. I am one of a kind. Yeah. God throughout the mold. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And There's no one else like me. Yeah, <laughs> she'll say, I can't be ugly. There's no one else like me. God threw out the mold. I love that. Mm-hmm. And then days you feel fat, what do you say? I say, nope, I'm just the right size for my destiny. And how fat is your heart for the Lord? Yeah. So she, oh my she turns God. it around. I'm buying flip-flops today. <laughs> yes. Well, and even like, even when we're supposed to meet somebody at a restaurant and it looked like such a dump and when we pull up and she <laughs> says, oh, this place looks exquisite. I mean, she just chooses like, so whatever negative I'm thinking, in my mind she's speaking the exact opposite and she'll often use bigger words than what you know we would use it's just the brain injury but she'll come out with these huge words sometimes but i mean if we all lived like that um one day i said to jen why are you always positive Mm -hmm. and i wrote it down on a sticky note because i knew she wouldn't remember what she said but she said god is the feeder of positive and satan is the feeder of negative Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I don't, you know, when I start to speak negative and think negative, it controls my destiny and yes. I'm going to believe God. And, you know, Satan is our enemy. Anyone listening, yes. Satan is the real enemy. It's yes. not your spouse. It's not your in-laws. It's not your ex-laws. It's, it's not your kids. Satan is the enemy mm-hmm. and he wants to destroy us in mm-hmm. our minds. As soon as we're Christian, he can't have us. Yes. I mean, the moment we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us the power of God, Mm -hmm. the seal of adoption. We are God's child. We're secure and safe. But Satan wants to keep us so messed up with his lies and trapped in our mind, feeling unworthy and not enough. And none of us are worthy. That's Mm -hmm. why Jesus died on the cross. He paid the penalty for our sins. And we have to be able to receive his forgiveness Mm -hmm. and trust him. And um, I love how, I, I just love, how Jen does that. She shows us every day what that looks like um, to trust God, to trust God with everything. And, you know, life is hard. Um, One day, Jen, you were looking in the mirror and what were you doing? This in particular day, I was, I was counting my scars. I just, I wanted to know how many I had. And it was cool because as I was going through this process, God just spoke to my heart and I could just hear him telling me, you know, Jen, when I look at you, I don't think, oh, you're the girl with all these scars. No, when I look at you, I just, I see that you are beautiful. You are priceless. You are worth it. You are mine. And so I just, I love to encourage others with that fact of just, I want them to know that when God sees you, he doesn't see your brokenness or your scars, no. When he sees you and when he looks at you, he sees your potential. He sees the amazing plans that he has in store for you and how he wants to use you for his glory ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. And what what do we call our scars? Oh, yes. So we say we no longer have scars, but we have beauty marks of God's faithfulness. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, One of the words that we use for scars is kisses from heaven, which is God's kisses to us. Um, from heaven because we have survived something earthly but his divine work 
is continuing to go on through and around and however he chooses to do it because his spirit is so unlimited. Absolutely. And yet it's interesting, Linda, because you taught Bible study for years. So it's not the knowledge. I mean, while we need to know scripture mm -hmm. and right. put that in our heart, hide it in our heart, as Psalm right. 119 talks about, yeah. yet that Holy Spirit in us, when we have chosen to release our will, yeah. to accept Christ as our Savior, right. because we have no Savior without him, right. then his Spirit indwells us. <laughs> and Jen, you are a living, walking testimony of that. I also have to think, Linda, that has to be hard at times because your head can get right. in the way. Sometimes, as John tells me, yeah. Mom, your brain is in the way. Right. And I'm like, it is. Yes, <laughs> so how do, you, how do you navigate that? It's hard. It's so hard. And I struggle with God. And I doubt. I'll never forget. Um, uh, for years, I led a large Bible study at our church. Um, when the wreck happened, I was leading one in, in our house. And then God called me to lead one at church and it just grew to over 500 women. It was just the power of God. And, he, and God asked me to live my brokenness out loud in front of these ladies and be real and vulnerable. And um, the one day I said to Jen, I'm going to tell him I'm doubting God. And she said, well, that doesn't make you sound very spiritual. I said, I know. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's true. I'm just doubting. And, and, um, so we've had we've had a lot of other things happen as well and um my husband had prostate cancer and you know all of his injuries were in that area and his hip and screws and so i don't know but i feel like all the radiation all the things um uh, but he had prostate cancer at 48 which is very young and so i remember like a contrast was um you know, just, I wanted to be in a pit, you know, I just did, I wanted to be in a pit and, um, then just started praising God and, and saying, you know, um, and I think it was, I think it was right around the time of our wreck was on November 5th. So I'm trying to remember this story, but she came down and I'm like, do you know what day it is? Mm -hmm. And, um, she said, like, November 5th. It was November 5th. And then I said, Jen, do you know what day that is? And she said, is it a national holiday? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's the anniversary of our car wreck. And she just started jumping around like she was hearing it for the first time <laughs> around the kitchen going, yay, we're alive. We're alive. We're alive. <laughs> and I thought, but no, okay, it wasn't I like that. This but day it is. Is it. And I was so upset that Andy had cancer and I was just going to have a pity party for a few days. But then I realized, you know, I can either stay in this pit, which is miserable. I feel awful and I'm isolating myself from people, or I can start dancing with Jen in the kitchen and be so glad we're alive. And it's that. So, so as much as there's times I want to just say to Jen, stop being positive. Um, she truly reminds me of truth. And, um, even when she's negative, she'll come back and apologize for it, which is just, you know, I feel like, again, I don't want to miss what God's trying to teach me that when I'm really surrendered to the spirit, when I'm really walking in the power of the spirit, instead of my own strength, um, that I'm going to be in tune with, I'm going to, I'm going to want to make things right, right away. I'm not going to want to hold on to bitterness. I'm not going to want to um, hold on to grudges. And the thing you said earlier about hiding God's word in your heart, I know you I know this to be true that when life hits us and we are squeezed, like when trauma comes and we are squeezed, whatever we have poured in is what comes out. And if we have poured scripture in, I mean, the Holy Spirit can't remind us of a verse we never read or we never memorized. But in those darkest moments, the Holy Spirit's going to bring to our mind the, the word of God that we have hidden in our heart, those childhood songs. I remember I, I, you know, I would just sing Jesus loves me to Jen over and over again. Um, in the hospital. And I've realized this too, because my body was crushed, because I couldn't help, I could not help the nurses like change that Jen's diapers in the hospital. I mean, it was just horrific. You know, my beautiful 15 year old girl who was a varsity cheerleader and soccer player and straight A student is in this 
bed and I'm having to let my friends help change her diapers because I could not help do that. Like that was horrific to me. And yet now I realize the only thing I had was my mouth. So I couldn't physically help Jen at all. I was so broken and, and in her pain and in her thrashing, I used my mouth and that was the most important thing I could do was to pray out loud, quote scripture out loud and sing praise songs. And, and the only thing I could do for, for weeks and weeks in the hospital was I would just start singing Jesus loves me. Nothing else would come to my mind and I would mm. get over and over and Jen would mouth it. You know, yes. it just, I mean, it's just a reminder, Jesus loves me. And then later when Jen came home and life was so hard, um, and I would wake up in the night and Jen had so many problems. I, I couldn't even name them all. I mean, I couldn't name them all. She got so sick when she ate, her whole body was hypersensitive. So, she, you know, she would feel, she was dizzy. She had, she had headaches. It felt like a crane on her head. I know mean, it went on for years. And so when I would wake up in the night, I would just start singing, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And that's a song I learned as a kindergartner, but that's what the Holy Spirit brought to my mind. Those simple truths. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. It can just be Jesus loves me. This I know my God is so big. There's nothing he can't do. And to focus on that. And then all these other things I can't control to say, God, I'm just handing them up to you to hold. I can't hold them today. It is just too much pressure. And and another thing I'm learning is I take all this pressure on me. I can literally almost feel it, the weight on my shoulders. Like I have to fix Jen or I have to help her heal, you know, or it's my fault if she doesn't become independent or whatever. But what God has shown me is as women, and I'm sure men too, we wear all these titles, yeah. like maybe we're a mom or we're a owner of a business or, or or whatever these titles are, but the only title that God wants me to wear is that I am his child. And as his child, all he wants me to do is spend time with him and trust him. He wants me to trust him. He doesn't want me to take on these heavy burdens. His word tells me that his burdens are light. <laughs> his, his load is easy. His burden is light. So when I'm taking on these heavy burdens on myself, that is not God. That is Satan. And um, Jen, I love what you say about Satan, how you view him. Because so often she would get sick right before we speak, or she would yes. have terrible struggles. And what would you say? Say, Satan, you are under my feet. And the only power that you have over me is the power that I give you by the lie I choose to believe. And then I would flip flop it and say, no, I'm believing God. I'm believing truth. Yeah. And literally we'd be in the bathroom and she's saying yeah. out loud, Satan, you're under my under feet. My and I'm embarrassed. Feet. Like who's going to think we're crazy. But I love yeah. what Jen said. Yeah. This will change your life. Mm -hmm. The only power yes. Satan has over you is the power you give Satan by the lies you choose to believe. And again, we have power over yes. Satan because God himself we're lives victorious. in us and the victory's already been won. <laughs> and I just want to say something to anyone listening. You may not have physical scars, but every single one of us has emotional scars. And those are so painful. I think they're the most painful of all because so often they're hidden deep in our heart and we carry these scars and wounds that no one even knows about. And that can be the worst thing of all like this, these scars. And yet Jesus is the healer and he died for us. He died and he can mend us not just spiritually, but emotionally. And I love to think of how he can stitch our heart back together again, mm -hmm. stitch by stitch. Mm -hmm. And our pain has a purpose. He uses everything we go through. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wasted. And um, your pain will put you face to face with someone else who's in pain. And what if you share Jesus with that person? What if you help change their destiny forever? This is what we told our friends last night. Um, instead of going into all these doctor's offices, feeling like God has disappointed you. What if you went on mission? Like who could, I want to, Lord, 
I'm looking for a divine appointment today. And maybe I could share Christ with the doctor. Maybe I could share Christ with someone in the waiting room. Maybe I could go with something in hand, a little booklet to hand to people, a little gift to give hope. Like then you, then you're changing it. You're going on mission. And, um, you know, Jen actually had thyroid cancer a few years ago and, um, it was because of all the CT scans on her head. And so again, I'm wrestling with the Lord and I just went to a dark place and I, yeah, you're like, my daughter, hasn't she gone through enough yes. Lord and now cancer? Yes. yes. Like that can be angering. And in that moment, like I feel frustrated and angry and I can't imagine what you went through with that. Yes. And yet Jen flip flops it for you. <laughs> Did Yeah. So I'm saying, God, in my mind. Jen was still suffering because of the sin of someone else because of the drunk driver. And now it's led to cancer because of all the CT scans and all the radiation on her head. And I know people listening can relate to that. You suffer every day, maybe because of the poor choices someone else made. Mm -hmm. And, and again, I have to go back to the cross and what did Jesus suffer for us? You know, that's my only hope is to go back to the cross Um, and, and how Jesus suffered for me and how he doesn't owe me anything. He gave me everything when he died on the cross for me. And that no matter what painful thing I go through in this life, I mean, Jesus loves me. And Satan wants me to doubt that he loves me. But if I was the only person on this earth, he would still die just for me. You know, the shepherd, you know, left the 99 sheep and went after that one lost sheep. If if you were the only person alive, Colleen, Jesus would still die just for you. He loves you that much. And so for me, as I'm wrestling with this, um, this is not Jen, but this is my wrestle because Jen says to me, mom, your brain gets in the way and you think <laughs> too much and you need to let go and trust God. But the only thing that gives me comfort is the cross. And what Jesus did for me, and then to realize that I'm only here a short time on this earth and whatever pain I have to endure, I want to take as many people with me to heaven as I can. And I don't want this pain to be for nothing. I don't want it to be for nothing. I want it to count for something. And you can literally flip flop that around. I got so mad at Satan one day and I said, you tried to take out my family and I am going to make you pay. (laughs) And we are going to tell. So every morning, instead of, you know, for so many years, I woke up and I thought I can't even make it through the day, but I'm like, no, I'm going to turn that around and I'm going to be on mission every day and say, Satan, you're going to be so sorry you mess with our family because we are going to share Jesus with every person we can. And we just celebrated our 10th year in ministry. And we have a website, hopeoutloud.com. But God has turned our tragedy into a ministry. And it's unexplainable what God has done. We have seen over 21,000 people give their lives to Jesus. Not because we're perfect, because we're broken. And because your story and your pain, it just gives you a right. People will listen yes. when they want. We go into public schools. We get to go everywhere. Mm-hmm. And Jen says, well, I can't remember to not talk about Jesus. I have a brain injury. <laughs> so, <she laughs> so that's her way in. It's a way <laughs> like, it. You can't tell me not to talk about Jesus in the public school right. because I can't remember you telling me not to yes. do that. <laughs> so even though we're so careful when people come up one at a time, you know, she can just share with them, but we get to go everywhere. And now um, Jen's little prayer book, which is her prayers coming out of the coma. Um, uh, it's just powerful. It teaches people how to talk to God. I'm going to send you one. Um, you can get them yes, at hopeoutloud.com. We literally just self-published it. And um, then last year during COVID, someone, another ministry published 100,000 copies, gave it out all over South America. They printed it in the country of Columbia, and they were rescuing these boys and girls. Um 
out exactly. of out of trafficking, out of um, some teenagers, out of um, you know they start young with the kids and they use them to run the drugs because they won't be able to be arrested. And so um, we were able to partner with a lot of different people on the ground. And so already 104,000 copies have been given out and they want more and they're using it as a way to teach these kids how to talk to God, how to receive God as their Lord and Savior. And, um, and truly that's what Jen did when she had the cancer. She just said, she wasn't mad at God like me. She said, oh, God's going to expand my ministry. <laughs> and not everybody understands cancer. I mean, you said not everybody understands brain injury, but they can relate with cancer yes. in some way. And um, when the first time we went and Jen had to have her thyroid removed and it was in her lymph nodes, um, all of that, Jen took her prayer books and she just handed them out. We, we ran out of copies every day. She would hand them out at the cancer the center. The check-in lady would be like, I need more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, again, my battle was Jen, you're, you're the youngest one here, you know, cause by then she was an adult and, um, but yet the youngest one in that cancer center and Jen's like, but I know the healer, I know the healer. And yeah. so then what happened was Jen handed those prayer books out. And two years later, we were able to speak at a church right by the UVA Cancer Center. And who did you meet? Precious Florence afterwards came up to us and she said that she was cancer free and we rejoiced with her. And then she pulled out of her purse. It was my prayer book. It was all tattered and worn. And she said, Jen, I've been praying your prayers every day. I hope that's okay. For two years. A nurse had given, had saved Jen's prayer book and given it to her. And she had been praying these prayers for two years. And then what did she, and then she said, I, I, I even prayed the salvation prayer in the back and I think it took. <laughs> yeah. She said, my husband's being said, I'm being nicer. And I think it took. And <laughs> That's so, so and she amazing. literally yeah. had no hair. She had a baseball cap and we rejoiced mm. with her. And um, because you don't always see what happens later, you know, you share the gospel, but you don't always know the backstory. And um, a few months later, we got an email that Florence had passed away. And again, my first negative thought was, we thought she was healed. But what did you say? I said, she is healed. She's dancing on streets of gold in heaven. She Mm -hmm. is healed. Yeah. She's with our Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so true. You guys are, you're talking in, I mean, it's so much hope. Mm -hmm. And yet I love what you said, Linda, in the book. You said, I don't want people to look at our lives and see just this, this hope. It's a struggle. There is a struggle every day. And I think now more than ever in the world that we're living in today, where the enemy is taking ground because our thoughts are are on today they're on the circumstances they are not above the circumstances where god is um speak to those who have lost their hope and are mulling through that mud and trying to step forward thinking there's no way right because you're talking about finding a way and that was provided and continues to be day by day, sometimes moment by moment. Moment by moment, yes. So again, I truly believe Satan is the enemy. Satan is our enemy. And he wants yes. all of us to feel stuck trapped. or trapped and hopeless. I think that's a big word, hopeless. Mm. And one thing I've learned is we all have feelings, especially as women, we have feelings all over the place. And our feelings are real but they are not always true. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I may wake up this morning and I may feel unloved, but when I've got to run to scripture for truth, there is so much confusion today. And what is truth? But the Bible is the only absolute standard. So I may wake up and feel unloved, but when I run to God's word, Romans eight says nothing Nothing. can separate me from the love of God. I may wake up this morning and I may feel hopeless, but when I run to God's word, um, Hebrews 6, 19 says, we have this hope as an anchor of our soul and it's Jesus. He's our anchor to keep us from crashing when the storms come. And I'm, again, I may feel, unlo- I may feel alone 
I mean, there's someone listening right now that feels alone, but when you run to God's word, Joshua 1, 9 says, do not be afraid, you know, be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid for the Lord. Your God is with you. I'm never alone. God's always with me. And so I think we have to know how to do battle. We have to know who our enemy is and the way we battle them is with God's word. Yes. God's word is my offense and my defense. And so, um, my son, Josh used to play football. And one year he had a helmet that did not work. It was a brand new helmet, but it would fly off every time someone tackled him and Jen and I'd be praying out loud. But, you know, I like to think of God's word as our helmet. Yes. And if I did not read God's word this morning, or if I do not quote it out loud, like my protection is not on. And so I've got to, I literally write God's word on sticky notes. I have, okay, right here. I have them right here on my <laughs> computer. I have them on my I mirror. Love it. I mean, this is Proverbs 2, 7 and 8 and 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Um, I have, I have scripture everywhere to remind me of truth because my brain does get in the way and it is a mm -hmm. daily struggle. It is a moment by moment struggle. And sometimes I say to my husband, if I start crying, I may never stop. Mm. And so again, Satan's fingerprints are, and this is so powerful and this is in scripture, but Satan's fingerprints are confusion. Yes. Um, shame anytime i feel shame or the past shame anything similar. like that i'm worried about my past like i should have done this or if i had just done this like satan loves to bring up our past and paralyze us with our past but god's yeah. voice is the voice of today today i've got things for you to do today give me this day my daily bread and so that's how i try to just visualize this pit and any thought that is making me fall down in the pit is from Satan. But God's word is pulling me out of that pit every time. And anytime I have confusion, that is Satan. And I have to just out loud say, Satan, get behind me. That is not true. And I try, I, even last night I was praying over these people we were talking to, Lord, would you just make an alarm go off in them every time it's a lie and it's not true? Like, would you help them recognize this is a lie? And and again, we've got to know God's word to know when it's a lie, but, but I, I almost want to catch it like a baseball, like that lie. I, I'm not going to let it penetrate my heart. I'm going to hand it up to God. I'm going to put it on his hook, but I don't, I don't want those lies to penetrate my heart and to make me feel so sorry for myself. Cause when I start going there, it's just this never ending downward spiral. Um, if I start saying out loud all the things that aren't fair or are the things that we've had to give up or all the things that, you know, the sacrifices, mm. I got to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. I've got to keep my eyes focused on truth. I have got to be ready for that enemy. Again, he cannot have you, but he wants to discourage you and he wants to destroy families. Mm -hmm. Um, it's crazy what's happening right now. And that's so interesting. As you guys are talking, I'm thinking about just stuff I've read on shame recently and the interpersonal neurobiology of that and how you both are doing things like laughing yes. and dancing yes. and speaking truth out loud. Yes. All of those yes. scientifically are proven to engage our whole brain. Yes. And as much as it may be said, well, Jen is still broken. Jen, your brain is functioning at all levels yes. in a way that I cannot imagine. Yeah. And yet I don't see it. So I don't see it as broken. I see it as God revealing himself mm -hmm. through what science is discovering. And that is when we dance, when we sing, when we praise, when we speak out loud. You know, some of the things that you were saying when we pray, when there's when we meditate on his word, it engages our entire body system and that feeds our souls. So you I would say you're the most healthy one in the bunch right now. <laughs> that, that's what emotionally she is. She does not. It's doubt incredible. Us. And now, I do want to ask. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about um, your husband and your son, because this is a family Yes. issue and 
And when one person or when someone in the family is struggling, and then the whole family is struggling, what how what would you say to a sibling or to a husband or to a wife or to a daughter, a grandparent or grandson who who um is caregiving and how do you engage the family? I mean, a lot of what you just mentioned, I, again, our whole family was praying out loud. So we would get around Jen's bed every night um, and just pray. And um, trauma either tears a family apart or it brings you together. And again, you have to choose to run to Jesus. And there were months where Andy and I, I would find Andy just sitting in the living room in the dark and he would play that song. It's an older song, but Jesus come to my rescue. Where else can I go? And you have to just grab a simple truth. Jesus loves me a simple thing. And you speak it out loud over and over again. And my husband, his faith statement was God is going to heal Jen to be exactly how he wants her to be. And he would say that over and over. And I was not spiritual enough of that, but I would just say this life's just a dot. And then I would say it's a half a dot. In other words, I can do anything for 60 years, 80 years, you know, when I have all of eternity in heaven. And then Jen, literally, what did you start calling me? Polka dot. She started calling me polka dot. And that was her first book. Her memory was polka dot. Um, because I just couldn't even make it through the day. I'm in a wheelchair going, it's just a half a dot. I can do this for a half a dot. Um, and that's what I clung to. So God will do that. He will put a song on your heart to just say over and over yes. again. Um, our son, Josh, uh, he talks about how um, forgiveness, how he had to stop blaming God, which is something really hard to even say out loud, but he was, he, he talks about, um, Josh talks about how he had to stop saying, God, why? And his thing was, he was sitting right next to Jen. So he was saying, Lord, why did Jen get the brain injury instead of me? I would have done anything to take it. Why does she have to go through this almost survivor guilt, which is very real for a lot of siblings and for a lot of parents, because as a parent, we would want to take the pain for our child any day. Absolutely. And again, Josh said, you know, I saw God using Jen and I wanted God to use me, but I had to stop asking why. And I had to open my hand and say, what, Lord, what do you want to do with this? I can't change it. And I had to stop blaming God. And, 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 you know, it it sounds weird. It's not like we have to forgive God, but he doesn't do any wrong, but we have to start blaming him in our humanness. And God understands that we're humans. Another thing Women is in that freedom. we have to forgive ourselves. Um, there is no verse in the Bible that says you have to forgive yeah. yourself. But what it first John one nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when that shame comes and that condemnation, and by the way, shame is feeling bad about who you are, guilt, is what we feel when we sin, and then you can confess it and, and the blood of Jesus covers it. But shame is feeling bad about who we are. That is from Satan. And so that's the identity. That's that's our identity. identity. When we start agreeing with Satan about our identity, that we're worthless or that we're not enough or that we're too much of a mess or too broken for God to use Mm -hmm. us. I mean, it doesn't matter how broken we are. Again, the Holy spirit is perfect inside of us. And so we have to be able to receive God's forgiveness. And there are some people that I've talked to. I know so many can relate to this. If they did not feel loved as a child, they have a hard time receiving the heavenly father's love. If they didn't have an earthly father that loved them. And here's the thing. If they didn't have love growing up, they have a hard time loving themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you can't love yourself, it's so hard to love others. Mm -hmm. And you can hear God loves me. Jesus loves me over and over, but to be able to actually receive it, Mm -hmm is a whole other thing. Like we've got to receive God's forgiveness. We have to believe that Jesus did what he said he could do, that when he died on the cross, he paid the penalty for my sin. 
past, present, and future. So, so not only do I have to forgive other people, I've got to receive God's forgiveness for myself. And so when those lies, those condemning thoughts and like Satan, Satan is our accuser. So he tricks us into sinning and then he accuses us before God. And yet Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father. He's interceding for us. The Holy spirit is interceding for us. So God is on our side. He does not want us to feel um, like we are hopeless and stuck. He wants us. And one thing we've learned by going to brain therapy, that you can always be healing and moving in the right direction. One, one step at a time. And you can say that out loud. Yes. I am not stuck. Mm. I am healing and I am moving in the right direction. I'm you not, learned. I'm not as depressed mm. today as I was yes. yesterday. Yes. You know, yes. I, I am choosing to get out of bed today. Mm. I am choosing to get a shower. I am choosing to eat breakfast. You know, yes. I'm just one step call at a time. A I'm going to call a friend or I'm going to get out in the sunshine and go to a park. park. But um, some signs of depression are when you don't want to get out of bed, um, when you don't want to do the things you normally enjoy doing. And if that is you right now, if you're listening and, and you're isolating, call a friend, get out in the sunshine, take a shower, eat your favorite dessert, do something, you know, you've got to get up. And um, what I love is the story in the Bible of Elijah. He was one of the greatest prophets. Mm -hmm. And after he took on all those prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel and defeated them, he hit, I mean, he hit a great depression. Yeah. And I think it was Queen Jezebel was going to kill him. And he was yeah. afraid of a woman after taking on 300 and some prophets of Baal. And he ran and hid. And if you read God's word, it says he wanted to die. Yes. And so that's a suicidal thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, suicide is real. We get notes every day about people wanting to take their lives. And, mm -hmm. and yet God does not condemn wow. him when, uh, when that Elijah says, out. yeah, he sends an angel and yes. the angel comes close and touches him. Wow. So in our depression, in our suicidal thoughts, God come, cl come mm -hmm. close and he touches us. Yes. And he just did. He said to Elijah, get up eat. Here's yeah. some bread. I mean, it miraculously he had, you know, the angel reminded of the Lord him. had bread, but he reminded him of truth. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. There's 7,000 other people yes. just like you that are trusting me. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. And so we've got to, though, that's yes. such a, a yes. beautiful pattern for us in our depression mm -hmm. um, and in feeling hopeless, how to get up that. Yes. and then we got to go to God's word mm -hmm. for truth, remind of truth. And that to stand on in those yeah. darkest moments, God comes close. He hugs us. He cradles us. I love Jen says he will cradle you. He will hug you. He will hold you. And he is not ashamed of us. God no. is never ashamed of us. He says, right come just as you are. Yeah. You know, he doesn't say, I'm going to fix you first. Yeah. He says, come to me just as you are. I love you. I made you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I know. <laughs> he knows our struggle. He knows our inner struggle more than we know it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our best prayer is God, help me. Just help me. I, I just his name. Just Jesus, Jesus. 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 Oh, yeah. all the time. There yeah. were so many. I could. We said I could sit and listen to y'all all day long <laughs> because you're so um, you give so much hope. So as we come to a close, Jen, I would love for you to pray for um, pray for all who are longing to know Jesus, who are longing for his touch, who are in need, who are in sorrow, who are hopeless, uh, basically all <laughs> just speak into that. Yes. Let's pray. Almighty, almighty Father. <laughs> mm, Daddy, we run to you. And Lord, I love how you were there to greet us with open arms. You are running after us just to mm, and give us a big hug. <laughs> I love that. And Father, for my brothers and sisters today, help them to know that they are never out of your reach. And so, Father, Mm, Daddy, I love how you accept us just as we are. You uh, see our dreams. You see our sorrows. You see those regrets. Father, you see those who we need to forgive. 
and those who just need a fresh new start, you see that as well. So Father, I just want to pray that you would meet with us today, Father, and that you fill our hearts and our minds and our souls up with that truth, that living truth that is found in you and you alone. And Father, I just want to pray just that you'd fill us up with that love today that is found in you and that you would cleanse us with that perfect peace. Daddy, thank you for how you aren't done. So I just want to pray that as we are moving forward, that you'd help us just to take a big step and just that you'd help us today just to get out of that boat and to meet you on the water. I love how you, with you, there are no limitations. With you, all things are possible. So Father, give us just a insight to what that looks like today. We just can't wait to see all that you have in store. So Lord, I just want to pray that today that my friends would just be overwhelmed with that sense of truth, that sense of security, that sense of abundance and clarity like never before. We praise you, Lord, for how with you the best is yet to come. Woo! <laughs> I love that. And just fill us with the strength to face the future. We can't wait to be a part of it, Lord. And bless my friends today in every way with that sense of security that is found in you. To your name, Almighty Father. Amen. Amen. Well, I can't, I can't talk real well right now because I'm crying. <laughs> um, thanks, you guys. What an amazing testimony. You have touched my heart, and I know you're touching so many hearts as you show up every single day. Thank you for this time. And um, please go to hopeoutloud.com. Is that what it is? Your hopeoutloud.com. And Jen, thank you for showing up and for, um, and Linda, thank you for stewarding what God has put on your plate the daily hardships and making a choice to step into it every moment, every second of every day. Thank you so much, you guys.